instrument that was provided by the Italian Space Agency in a cooperative agreement. And you'll see that what we can do, it's an active system, pulses the radar uh, beam out, receives it, and by looking at the reflection and timing that reflection, you see the interfaces of layers that are deep within the polar cap. So, theoretically, we've split the polar cap here, and we're going to look at a cross-section through that, and what you'll see are those layers that are inside the polar cap, and when you look at those, you see a similar kind of pattern of many fine layers together, packets of layers separated by other periods. So that, too, is probably part of this process in which the obliquity, that is, the tilt of the rotation axis and the eccentricity of the Mars orbit, have played together to produce these layers. And this is leaving us a physical record of that recent, geologically speaking, climate change on the planet. Now here are the layers exposed uh, as we see them in the visible at the edge of the polar cap. And looking down onto the floor, you'll see in the lower right there the pattern of ground that also suggests that this ground has been worked, that it too contains ice in it. And this pattern ground we see over a good part of the high latitudes of the planet. Different in character and detail, and those differences are telling us about the nature and the amount of uh, water ice that was removed from these areas to produce these patterns. In the next one, there's also activity that goes on today. In this slide, what we're seeing are the wind during the springtime when this polar cap is coming back into sunlight. So the icy surfaces are warming up from the very cold CO2 frost temp point temperatures to warmer temperatures as they're heated up in sunlight. And just like in Antarctica, there are winds, what we call the catabatic winds, that come down off the high plateau, sweep out over the surrounding areas. We caught three or four of these uh, outbursts of wind and such. And not only is the wind blowing here, raising dust, but in this case, it actually triggered a landslide at the edge of the cap. There was a block of material that was down on the surface after the event that was not there before. And yet, we don't see an accumulation of these large blocks that have clearly been eroded from the edge of the cap. And that's telling us that much of that material is ice and has been volatilized. That is, it's gone back into the atmosphere as vapor, probably trapped back into the interior of the polar cap in a seasonal cycle and progression of the transport of water on Mars. Let's go to the next one, please. We're going to take a look at another of the recent activities, that is, the activities that go on today on Mars, we're going to look at a two-week segment. Here you're looking at the south pole of Mars. Right now, it's uh, summer in the southern hemisphere of the planet, and that's the season for dust storms on the planet. Sometimes those local dust storms, which you'll see here, coalesce into bigger, more regional storms, and occasionally, about once every three Mars years, they go global, covering most of the hemisphere, perhaps even both of the hemispheres, with a dust haze that will persist for a couple of months as the dust, fine dust, hangs in the atmosphere, gradually settles out. So we're going to run a video here that will show you the activity that comes around this. I want you to take a look at from about 9 o'clock to noon there, and you'll see an outbreak of the wind as it's picking up dust. And so we'll run the video here, and we'll loop through this several times because it goes by pretty fast. Take a look here, and you'll see in that sector the dust that is raised, you can tell by its color, you can tell by its form, the fact that it seems lumpy and bumpy and it's organized in these streaks, that uh, the wind uh, organizes the dust movement in the atmosphere. So we'll play it again and take a look. There are other outbreaks that are also down there uh, around uh, 4 o'clock and such. So there are many dust storms that occur, and they occur on a seasonal basis. And again, occasionally, they coalesce into a much bigger storm, and uh, in once every few Mars years, they may go global all the way from this. Now, we're going to take a look at the same sequence, but this time, instead of looking at the dust, I want you to look at the bright white areas, because this is the period. It's spring and summer on the planet, and this is when the seasonal CO2 frost, which also contains some water ice, is retreating back. So this is the snow line going away in the spring of the hemisphere here. And if you take a look, if you focus down on the crater down there at the bottom, you'll see that the crater almost disappeared. It didn't. It's just the highlighting that was due to the frost on its rim has disappeared. And you can see it, this seasonal retreat going in just the two-week time period that is covered by this sequence of movies. 
So Mars is an active place today, and we're seeing more details of that. So one final time through there. By the way, the, the garish colors there on the side, you put this together with a series of color filters, and you don't always have a complete image in each color, and so you'll get those artifacts. In the next slide, We're going to be, this video will show you another kind of recent activity on the planet, but one which is the extension of something that's been happening on Mars probably for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. And that's the formation of gullies on these steep walled cliffs and craters in this case. We're going to zoom in on this one. And the reason this one is of interest is because we're going to end here with this video flying over a deposit that wasn't there before. And the question is, what happened here? Was this an outburst of water that took moved water and debris down the slope of that crater? The water eventually goes back into the atmosphere. We're always looking for that liquid water, and we've not seen it as a permanent uh, uh, artifact of the surface today. And here we're zooming in on that bright area, which wasn't there before. We've seen a difference before and after pictures with our spacecraft. And there you look at the headwaters of what would have been the headwaters if it's formed by... Uh, as springs emerging onto the surface, water flowing down the slopes. So what's the problem? The slopes are very steep. It could be a dry avalanche of material. And in fact, when we went and looked at the deposit, we didn't see any signature that it was a salt deposit or an evaporite deposit of any kind. So we have to be able to separate these kinds of things. But we keep looking for these changes in the hopes that we're going to catch one of these almost in action. And we've come pretty close in a couple of cases. If we go to the next slide, what we'll see is another of these uh, fresh uh, gully formations that have formed. And um, here the white box, we're going to zoom into this area. So what you're looking at is another crater wall. And you see that there are several gullies that have been formed, etched into the wall of this. And we're going to zoom into this new deposit, this bright deposit down on the floor in the white box. So in the next slide, We'll take a look at that, and we targeted this one, so we got it right in the middle of the image where our color stripe is. And you'll notice that it's forked down there in, in the debris. And in fact, we have a stereo view. We can look at this one, and we can see that there's actually a small ridge that is producing that fork of whatever the cascading material is. This, too, could be a dry avalanche, but you noticed it followed a pre-existing gully chute that almost certainly was carved by water. And how do we tell that feature of that? Well, in the next slide, we'll show you some of the attributes of these. The flows that are cut through here, those channels, those look more like water than like dry avalanche mass wasting down the slope. You can see in some of the channels, there's an inner braiding of the channel, which means water flow occurred in it. And those are the things that tell us that some of these craters, many of these, of these gullies on the craters and other steep cliffs were indeed formed by the process of water. The question is, is water flowing today? And we have not yet got a definitive part, but we're going to keep looking. And we have the detail that we should be able to spot it if it will leave behind a kind of signature that we can interpret as an evaporite deposit. So next, let's uh, go to the next slide, please. This is a map. In the uh, diamonds, there are the gullies that we've seen. That is, new gullies that we've seen on the planet. There are seven of those in just the about 10 years of spacecraft monitoring that we've been able to do at Mars, where we've had enough data and covered enough area that we can actually see these things. You'll notice there's a preference for them. We've seen these mostly in the southern mid-latitudes. There are other parts, aspects of the ground in which when you look at it, you see that there's something we call terrain softening that suggests that even the impact craters that formed there, some of them impacted into icy ground. Other places in mid-latitudes in both the north and the south, our radar has actually detected that there are ice layers close to the surface, meaning within a few hundred feet of the surface. They're protected from evaporating away by the debris that has covered them since. But the emplacement of those may be the remnants from that last kind of ice age cycle that we were talking about earlier. The other dots on this particular map, the red ones are new craters that have formed on the planet during the period that Mars Global Surveyor was looking at it earlier in the last decade. Since then, we've managed to see a lot 